Blessed morning. We're continuing our series on journeying to the heart of Christ, and we're speaking to a dear friend of mine, Amy Crawford. She's at Good Samaritan. Amy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, sure. So uh, currently, I am actually staying at home with my four daughters who I adopted a few years back, my husband and I. Um, they're incredible. <laughs> Three teenagers and a nine-year-old, and it is it is a circus, is to put it mildly, and I get to be the ringmaster. Uh, so, so yeah, that's uh, that's ultimately uh, you know where I find myself now. But my background, uh, I've been doing ministry work, and I've been doing um, psychological counseling, clinical counseling, that sort of thing for a long time, um, as well as youth work and youth mentorship. And so, uh, on the side, when I'm not busy carting my kids to soccer and whatnot. Um, I find myself engaging in a lot of that sort of work, and so that's what I've been. That's what I've been up to lately. Well, I think we've spoken often, mm. and you have this story I think that resonates mm. uh, with many mm. about your journey and yes. with yeah. Christ. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your faith journey, and sure. and again, we'll get into it about what Christ means to you. But tell us a little bit about your faith journey. Great. Um. So ultimately, uh, I. Where I find myself now is something very different from where I started out. Mm -hmm. um, I started out uh, in the evangelical church. It's where I grew up. Um, and I have a lot of affinity for what I learned in that space. Uh, I think a, a real heart for Christ, um, a heart for evangelism, a heart for the gospel. Uh, but I found myself limited in what I could do. It, it was very frustrating for me as a woman um, to be told that I wasn't allowed to, I wasn't allowed to move forward in positions of leadership, even though I felt that call in my own heart. So, after leaving high school, I went to college and was seeking, and managed to stumble into a small church, St. Mary's Episcopal Church over in Wayne, um, and I was <sighs> carried away uh, in a current. It, that's the only way I could describe it. it the, the liturgy was so powerful. Um, and I think even more than, than the liturgy, it was, it was, a, it was a service that was an, about me and my relationship with God. It was about the community and our relationship with Christ. And so in the space of the Episcopal Church, I was dropped deep into what it means to be a community living for Christ. And that, that, that sold me. I was, I was converted in that moment. <laughs> and that's beautiful. And, and I've always said that my relationship with Christ is sort of like um, um, the old Three Stooges movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always chasing after him. You go in one door yeah. and you keep chasing. Yeah. But it's the thing to go deeper, deeper. And I it's, love right. how you overlay it, not only yeah the relationship with Christ, yeah. but the communal it relationship is, yes. with Christ and those people you journey with. Yeah. Tell me, in your daily walk, where do you see Christ? Oh, um, I think right now most I see is in the youth of the church. I have been... I have been so... I gotta get, I'm going to get emotional talking Please about do. this because it's so, it's so powerful. These, these, these students teach me so much about what it means to truly live for Christ. I, we have students um, in our church right now, a, a couple of high schoolers, who out of their own love for Christ started a positivity club in their school. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they wrote notes of encouragement to every single student in that school, slipped it in every single locker in the school. We have students who are engaging in uh, in work in Haiti and in Guatemala, um, just out of their own their own heart for service, we have two students who actually just came in this year, never having been part of a church family, and are now getting baptized in the next few weeks. Oh, I, it's beautiful. it's incredible to see to see the passion and the joy and the growth that occurs in, in, in our students. And it, it shows me the future of the church. There's so much uh, hand-wringing now about the death of the church. Mm -hmm. The church is dying and, you know, I, I hear that and I think that there are some numbers that bear that out. But if, 
if we're watching that death, I think resurrection is right around the corner. Uh, mm -hmm. I recently used a quote from my favorite theologian, Archbishop William Temple, mm -hmm. and it, he focuses on the light of Christ, yeah. uh, that we have to be that lantern. Yes. And he says, I always say they prognosticated the death of the church for 2,000 sure, years, and sure, Jesus yeah. Christ always astounds us. That's right. But he says it's not the failure of the church, mm -hmm. it's the failure of us to be the church. Yes. And yes. that's where we have to shift our yes. thinking, yep. this body of Christ together. So if you were going to say, someone comes up to you, and they did not know you, and you wanted to say, why should they come to the Episcopal Church? Mm -hmm. Why should they journey with us? Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? In a world that is so divided, the Episcopal Church looks to walk the middle way. It looks to, to hold tension from two different places and gather them together. And it is, it's, it's not easy, but oh, it is so beautiful. And it's real, it's authentic. And that is something that is sadly missing in our culture today. How, how could you not want to engage in that? I, I, I don't want to you know, miss out on that, and I can't imagine anybody else would either. I just want to thank you, and for those that you do not know, I ask um, Amy to chair our the special right. liturgical commission uh, that was formed out of General Convention, right. and you're doing an amazing job thank taking you. in the breath thank of our, our liturgy, our history, yeah. and our future. I just thank you for blessing thank us you. on this journey. Thank you. It's much appreciated.